Good morning folks. Today I want to talk a few minutes about urinary tract infections in pregnant women. I get many many patients especially with the symptomatic bacteriuria or sometimes a woman who develops symptoms of urinary tract infection. The smooth muscle relaxation and subsequent ureteral dilatation that occurs in pregnancy <clears throat> those things facilitate the ascent of bacteria from the bladder to the kidney. So uh, many pregnant women suffer with uh, urinary tract infection and kidney infections. So there are also untreated bacteria that reside in many pregnant women. So you should always look for them because the risk of preterm birth, the risk of low birth weight, the risk of perinatal mortality increases with urinary tract infections. Now, let us see some important uh, pathology. Escherichia coli is the predominant uropathogen found in both asymptomatic bacteriuria and urinary tract infection in pregnant women. So, screen all pregnant women at least once. So even if they don't uh, report any symptoms, screen them like at 12 to 16 weeks of gestation. So take a midstream urine and send it for culture. And the diagnosis is made by finding high level bacteria growth like more than 10, point, 10 to the power of 5 colony forming units of group B streptococcus like 10 to the power of 4. 10 to the power of 4 per ml on urine culture in the absence of symptoms. Then you have a diagnosis consistent with UTI. Now how do you manage it? If it is asymptomatic bacteriuria, the woman doesn't have symptoms but have bacteria, then you should treat them with antibiotic therapy based on the culture results. So that reduces the risk of pyelonephritis and it is associated with improved pregnancy outcomes. So how do you treat them? Use beta-lactams, nitroferentine and phosphomycin. There are some limitations to these medications and I will uh, describe those things in a moment. But first remember to do a urine culture in all pregnant women and treat them if they are positive and do another culture to make sure that the infection has been completely treated. So if they are getting repeated infections, you always think about prophylactic or suppressive antibiotics. Acute cystitis should also be suspected in a pregnant woman who complain about new onset dysuria, frequency or urgency. And the diagnosis, again same thing, bacterial growth and urine culture. And the management of acute cystitis is also the same thing. You need to use the empiric antibiotic therapy and you need to do urine culture and repeat the culture. So beta-lactam antibiotics can be used, nitroferentine, phosphomycin. So first let us see asymptomatic bacteriuria. These women, they don't have over the symptoms but when you do a test you will see bacteria and if you see persistent bacteria recurrent cystitis just go ahead and use prophylactic or suppressive antibiotics acute pyelonephritis that is like kidney infection during pregnancy it presents with certain symptoms like flank pain nausea vomiting fever costovertebral angle tenderness. So if you see these symptoms, always think about pyelonephritis because treating it is very important. Pregnant women may become quite ill and are at risk for both medical emergencies like sepsis or respiratory failure or obstetrical complications like uh, preterm delivery. So you should always uh, treat pregnant woman with pyelonephritis and how do you treat them? Hospitalize them. Hospitalize them, put them on parenteral antibiotics like a, using a broad spectrum beta-lactam. 
and then after a few days you can change them to a viral regimen and send them home to be followed up with their OBGYN or primary care doctor. So pyelonephritis, hospital admission and then parenteral antibiotics. Now trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole can be used in certain times. Following the treatment, suppressive antibiotics are typically used for the remainder of pregnancy if the woman is getting like recurrent infections. Now penicillins with or without beta-lactam inhibitors, cephalosporins, adstrionum, phosphomycin, they are safe in pregnancy because of possible but certain association with adverse birth outcomes. We generally avoid nitroferrin time during the first trimester and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole during the first trimester and near term. So those are the restrictions to remember. Phosphomycin is generally considered safe in pregnancy. But you see, recently some studies are coming that doubt this recommendation. Nitroferentin is frequently used during pregnancy. But nitroferentin, they are saying it, is causes, it causes some defects. But these studies are not conclusive. And how much bias went into this study, we don't know. So nitroferentine is generally safe, but avoid them in the first trimester if there is a better alternate. Also, they can cause G6PD deficiency patients, they can cause anemia. Now, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole is typically limited to mid-pregnancy. So, this medication, trimethoprim, you avoid it in the first trimester and the third trimester. Just use it in the mid trimester. Because, as you know, it is a folic acid antagonist. But it is not a proven teratogen in humans. But we give prenatal vitamins, folic acid throughout the pregnancy. So it is generally safe. So go with the beta lactams. That is my recommendation. Thank you very much.